In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighborhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together, Together we're, we're Absolute dogs. dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Hello and welcome to the Sexy Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that gives you real life results. And today, it's a little bit different. Well, first off, here I am doing intros. Actually, I'm joined by one of our pro dog trainers, our training academy students, a brilliant, 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 brilliant dogs person. I'm joined by Sam. Sam, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And how are you feeling about being here? Good, a little bit nervous, but I'm good. It's <laughs> a little exciting, bit it's exciting. exciting. Really exciting. So I've invited you here today largely because um, first off, uh, you've completely changed your, your pathway and I thought that would be quite a cool thing uh, to chat to our listeners about and, and how you're following your passion, doing something completely different. But secondly, I thought you could maybe bring a slightly different perspective. So first off, I want to ask you, um, tell us where you've come from and maybe how your life's changed in the last few months. Uh, so I was previously in the RAF, so I come have a military background. I've been in the RAF for, I was in the RAF, I should say, for eight years. Um, I was a weapons technician, so completely removed from what I'm doing now. And now I have left the RAF very suddenly, actually, in the last sort of four or five months. Um, and I'm at Devon Dogs and I'm training people to help their dogs transform their lives and and struggles to strength. It's just amazing, and complete what change. what made you, I mean, that is incredible, first off. I mean, it is incredible. High five, because that is Thank like you. a complete um, U-turn. Complete um, U-turn. Isn't it? And what made you go for that U-turn? Like what made you think, <laughs> hang on a second, here I am uh, in, the, in the military world and actually, you know what, I'm gonna jump ship and I'm, I'm off to Devon and I'm gonna go play with dogs. Like what made you do that? Because I understand it mm -hmm. knowing that I did a very similar um, manoeuvre yeah. um, a, a little while back um, from, from teaching to, to dog training, but I think it could inspire other people. So what, what gave you the sort of permission, the opportunity, the, the moment to make the U-turn? I guess, so the, the RAF was for me, it was um, a means to an end at the time when I needed it. It was a fantastic career and it helped me grow in confidence in lots of ways. But when I came across um, absolute dogs, for my own dogs really, that's, that's how I started. Um, just learning how to help them through what we were going through and help our relationship. It just became, it became a bit of an addiction. It became really just the passion and the community and the learning. I just enjoyed it so much. Um, it became a bit of an obsession, but in a good way, I think, I hope. Well, a healthy obsession. <laughs> a healthy, I think there's gotta be healthy, healthy obsessions obsession, out there, right? Yeah, for sure. And it just grew um, and I just started getting a niggle, you know, and I, I, ha I knew that you did the PDT and the geek. And I was like, oh, that might be, you know, it might be fun to try. I'll do it for my own dogs. I'll do it for my own dogs. And just just explain to everyone, uh, PDT and geek, what's it about? What is it? How does it work? Um, how did you get involved? Because it's not something that everyone can do at every, uh, all the time, it's closed right now, but yep. actually how does it work when the opportunity does arise? So pro uh, PDT is pro dog trainer. And there is an addition where you can do um, a geek portion, which goes a little bit more into the science, the in-depth side of things. Um, and it opens usually once a year, roughly. Um, and you can, it will come up on various websites that we have on Facebook and it will be advertised or you can go on to the Absolute Dogs website. Um, and you can join up and do basically a course that will help you learn how to teach people and learn the science of what we do in Absolute Dogs and here at Devon Dogs as well. And, and I suppose you, like you said, you started thinking, mm, there's this little yeah. like niggle for my own dogs. Yeah. And I want it for my own dogs. Yeah. And I want it for um, learning with my own um, dogs. And, and you and your wife basically turned a whole, like a, a whole change in the way that you were training and living, right? Yeah, huge change, huge change in the way that we were particularly training our dogs mainly. Um, and it was just so much fun. And I felt like, 
my dogs were loving it, but they were learning and I was learning. And it was just, it was like a nice little team, you know, nice. that's what I just really, really loved about it. Um, and then when I, once I'd done Pro Dog Trainer and Geek, I started talking to friends about it and it, you know, they were like, oh, maybe you could help me with my struggles with my dog. And it was just really rewarding for them to and, and, and see those changes. You're doing this and all the meantime, you're also working in your sort of military role. Yeah, right? sort of 50 and hours a week. how's that working? Yeah. Oh my Lord, 50 hours a week, yeah, military roughly. world. And how's that working for you? Like, as in what you, what's your head telling you and what are you thinking? Um, mainly that, yeah, it's a great job, but it's not really something that I'd want to do forever, you know? Um, and it wasn't something that I felt passionate and, and I, I didn't wake up every day going, yeah, let's go to work. Um, whereas I was finding any second that I could get in my day to to keep learning about dog training. And wanting uh, to do a bit more of that. So you have changed your career path. Completely. Tell everybody what you're doing now. I now am a full-time trainer at Devon Dogs, um, helping people transform their lives with their dogs and their relationship, just the way that I did with Absolute Dogs. And let's have, and I mean, that's amazing. Another high five to yep. that, because that is definitely Fantastic. cool. Um, ha give me an example of a typical day in the life of Sam, the dog trainer. So tell everybody how that might look. Um, so really it's just the people that come here, we do a lot of stay and train um, holidays. So they come and they, they stay in the cottages that we have on site. Um, and then they come and the, a trainer will help them through the, their struggles. We'll have a chat. Some of it's theory based, a lot of it's practical with their dogs. Um, and my day, I mean, this morning I had a, a pre-arrival call just to help somebody understand what it is that is going to happen when they come here so that they're ready and, and you know, geared so up and prepared excited. And, yeah. yeah, getting ready. And also probably bring, that sort of thing. allaying some fears because I bet some people are a little bit nervous about coming. Yeah, sometimes I think, uh, be especially because, um, you know, Devon Dogs is like the hub, you know, um, it's the in-person side of Absolute Dogs. So I think sometimes the excitement and anticipation of it um, can be a little bit nerve wracking, but yeah. So just to kind of have a chat with them, you can see that we're friendly, <laughs> know that we're not scary and that they can ask us questions um, and that we're approachable. And, and, and then yeah. and then they come and so the rest of your day, how the rest of, how is the rest of your day potentially gonna look? Training people all day. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Playing yeah. with dogs. Playing with dogs all the time, yeah. And then also getting involved with, with absolute dogs on the side when, I, when I'm able to and Amazing. have the opportunity to, which is awesome. Amazing. Brilliant. Give me an example of um, a cool win that you've had whilst you're um, a dog trainer and, and, and whilst you've been working. Give us a, an example, maybe remove names, but, yeah. <laughs> but tell us um, tell us like a cool win you've had whilst you've been here. I had recently, um, and I really, really enjoyed teaching them. I had a lovely couple and they had a baby with them, which was a new dynamic for me. It was very, very different to have to think about a baby's needs Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So that was very, very different. Um, but they had three dogs, quite big dogs as well. Um, and being able to help them understand how to manage their dogs in their household for the future of where their baby is going to grow up and sort of safeguarding that and making sure all of them are protected nice. so that they don't have to think about maybe having to rehome their dogs. That was really special. You know, being able to sort of help them through that. Because a lot of people give them come that here because they're troubled yeah. with their dog relationships. Yeah. And actually, um, like you said, at, it, it, with a baby and three large dogs, yeah. that dynamic could become difficult. Very much. And rather than be reactive to it, mm -hmm. actually, can we be proactive as dog trainers? And this is a big shout out to all the dog trainers all over the world listening uh, to the podcast. Um, that actually, if we're sort of proactive in this. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to um, get hold of the situation before it ever becomes a problem, then we yeah. don't need to react with, um, we hear it all the time, dogs that are, are rehomed. And that's um, never to say that's the wrong thing. Actually, for some dogs and owners, that might be the right thing. Sure. Actually, importantly, these owners want to do something before it ever yeah. becomes troubled. So so that was a cool win for you. Yeah, um, really how, nice. how did it pan out? How did it work out? Um, we, we did a mix actually. So we did some offsite stuff. We went to um, a place called Saturn Moor. Nice. Um, so we did some, you know, long line stuff, some recall stuff because they go for walks. We talked about how they could work it in with the pram, you know, yeah. sort of head collars and stuff. We did some stuff in the cottage nice. in terms of presence doesn't mean access. Nice. And that's, I think that's a cool dynamic as well because yeah, you have sure. got the home from home. Yes. So you can be working yeah. home from home. I think that's a very special thing here, actually. I think it's something probably we can offer that maybe some other places can't, um, that we can actually work in your home as if you were at home and, and talk about your setup and how you might be able to gear it to set everybody up for success. And you've got everything here that you need. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. So all the equipment on the field as well. Um, we we sometimes train up there, and there's you know there's other dogs around, and so it's very much real life here. I'd say and set up safely. I think isn't very it? much, very yeah. well managed. Yeah, we're we're very careful about making sure that the dogs are um, rested throughout the training sessions, and then the trainers communicate with each other to make sure that we can. Um, Get everybody out safely and that we're sitting at again setting I think up everybody up for success you are really. really good and i'm saying you because um i used to be one of the trainers out there all the time and now actually um i kind of um watch you guys do that all the time and it's mm -hmm. amazing and you are really good at safeguarding so i watch that and you do very very well at your safeguarding you. i think no you're very take all of compliment. you yeah definitely <laughs> definitely a compliment and um, and so the, the other thing that makes me giggle i remember saying because one of the things that i find really tough as a trainer is actually always being prompted on time and i've got to remember one of my first conversations <laughs> yeah. with you i was like sam you always need to make sure that you are definitely here and ready for these customers because mm -hmm. they're going to be waiting for you. So as a dog trainer, what was your response to me? <laughs> Lauren, I'm military. <laughs> there's a there's a five minute rule for a five minute rule. You know, we're, I'm, yeah, I'm here about half an hour early every day. And I literally <laughs> loved it. I was giggling away because I thought, God, here's Lauren telling someone to be on time. So, um, so yeah, you got to giggle. You got to giggle. So, so Sam, I suppose, tell me one of your... Um, toughest moments over the last few months because you've had lots of changes yep. and that could be um, something to do with changing career or it could be something to do with actually tackling a new client because I know I've had a few tough moments I've definitely had um, moments where um, a dog hasn't behaved quite how I expected them to and to be honest a client hasn't yeah. either so I've had like weird weird moments that I just didn't expect and I wasn't necessarily prepared for have you had any of those over the last few months yeah I get, do you know what, straight away when you were talking about that I can think one in particular that really sticks in my mind um they were just, when I was talking to this client, they were just, the student, there was a few things that were maybe throwing up red flags and the things that she was saying didn't really match what I was seeing in the dog. And um, we, we went through the lesson, we talked about different strategies that she could start at home and I knew she had more lessons coming. So for me, that was kind of a, okay, do you know, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask some of the more experienced trainers yep. and have a chat with them and we can kind of bounce off nice. a little bit. So it was really nice to have the support here um, to be able to kind of say, you know, I think I'm not sure if I'm ready for this or if I'm right for it, but yeah. actually that support was able to kind of help me through that, which was nice. fantastic. Nice, so it's almost like making sure that we're hitting the mark. Yes, And actually, do we much. need to adapt something? Do we need yep. to flex something? Do we need to change something to yep. suit an individual? And I think that's the thing when um, hopefully lots of different um, trainers are listening all over the world. Mm -hmm. At the same time, lots of different students, I, I hope you guys yep. uh, listening to the podcast are, are listening thinking, I could, that could be me, mm -hmm. right? Because it could be us. And, and I think the thing is, we always want to do our very best to get the very sure. most out of the learning in sometimes quite a short window very short window yeah i mean i think i had a that was a two hour lesson which is actually it sounds like a really long time but, but it's, it goes not so a long fast time. it goes so fast so what advice would you give someone who is um coming away for training so someone someone who's doing that what advice would you give them before they ever um got into that position of being able to be um training in a new place as in coming coming, coming for, a lesson. To us yeah. for a lesson yeah coming to us or coming to a trainer for a lesson what sort of advice would you give them before they ever got there uh, i would say just be really honest and don't feel embarrassed you know, we've we've all been there uh, and we've seen lots of people that have been through the things that you are going through. So just be really honest with us because the more honest you can be with us, the better we can help you through what you're going through. Um, and, and absolutely, there is no judgment coming from us. So please don't feel embarrassed because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just dog behavior, right? And you're in you the know? right place. Yeah. You're in the right place. We're here to help. We want to help you. We want to help you through that. So please just come here and let us, yeah. I'd say, um, and, and be flexible for how we might change things on the fly because we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, and I suppose I, I'd love to know, since joining the team, Sam, how have you grown as a dog trainer? Um, I suppose, what do you know now that you maybe didn't know before? And I know you're you're fairly new still um, to yep. our team, uh, both at Absolute Dogs and Devon Dogs and, and here with what we do. Uh, but what do you know now that you didn't maybe know before? And what could you share for all the listeners out there um, to, to, to give them a, an insight into that? Um, so I think my biggest thing is is keep learning. I think that's this is the thing that I'm really learning, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, learning here is, so I've been on a few pro dog trainer days. Nice. And so investing in my yeah. own learning still, I think is like really important. And I've started doing um, train, so I've bought some training hours um, yeah. and I'm training with Michelle, which is another one of our lovely trainers, but I'm using some different dogs. 
And so, uh, like growing oh, it's my massive, skill, isn't it? Yeah, it was it was it was amazing. And I, I had ab- such a good session. I had I so much fun. Absolutely love that because you're saying, look, the thing about this is what I'm learning is I need to keep learning. Yeah. And what I'm learning is keep investing in myself yeah. and don't feel bad no. to invest in yourself because so many of us feel guilty um, to spend money on ourselves mm. or to um, invest in ourselves or even for me, it's not even necessarily the money so much; it's the time as well. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, should is this the right use of my time? My partner's at home or um, Eliza might need me or the dogs need this or but actually sometimes it's about saying that you need it yeah as well because it keeps you progressing yeah it keeps my knowledge fresh as well which means I can better help my students right so for me it completely makes sense but it's definitely sort of you know I've got my my stepmom at home and she's sort of like you're going into work again I'm like no I'm not I'm going for myself but it's work it's like no it's, it's really not <laughs> and I love you that know? because you're actually reframing her language as yes. well yeah. because I think sometimes that's something to be aware of isn't yeah, it how to sure. reframe yeah, so sure. no really really cool and um, what are your favorite things to teach if you've got a choice of um like lessons or um is there a skill in particular or an area in particular you'd like to grow in so something that you thought actually I quite like that I'd like to grow in or something just you actually really like teaching for example I personally love teaching puppies. They're yep. probably one of my favorite areas. <laughs> I also really do like dog sports. So dog sports, mm-hmm. they, they draw me. Um, how about you? Yeah, in terms of growing myself and, and things that I would like to sort of learn about, I'm just like so keen, so many things. So I'm doing a uh, master's class with you and doing yeah. agility, which is amazing. That's a completely new world. Um, and you're definitely putting me through my paces. She's going through her paces. <laughs> and pushing me and putting me in different comfort zones. Um, I'd love scent as well. Mm. So I'd love to learn a bit more about scent. I'd like to teach that further down the line. So learning a little bit more about that would be amazing. And I think scent is fantastic for all breeds, all yes. sizes, all ages. Yeah. I think it is such a, it's a beautiful outlet for mm-hmm. dogs. Yeah, and it's just so much fun to teach as well and to see them get it. I think that's really cool. Absolutely. And I think that that was one of the reasons we created the, the scent badge and, yeah. and the stuff that we do with Absolute Dogs because we know know that it can reach so many so if you yes. haven't checked that out guys check out the absolute dogs website for the scent badge because it's epic it is really cool um, yeah which, totally get it get it get it's it, amazing get it. <laughs> it's um, really really but good but it is it is one of those things isn't it there's so many things you want to learn yeah. how about if you were to have a lesson turn up and they had one area they wanted to work on what would be your favorite area if you got to Ooh. teach or, or something that you go yes i can get my teeth into that I um i actually really love playing around with boundaries nice that's just my favorite thing i think but i like I like building the drive in going. So that's my, like, I just love doing it. So nice. when you see a dog that's sort of like not quite getting it or they're struggling yeah. a little bit with yeah. the suction, yeah. I like building that drive. So, you know, nice. like two hot stop and stuff like nice. that. And that just really and good fun watching you i also think you're very good with our naughty but nice dogs oh thank so you so i think you've That's got a really re- good. you've got a very nice way uh, with the naughty but nice dogs I've got a huge passion there really because i mean that's that's my dogs right so that's where i started so i, I totally this might that's definitely my heart i think you know i think that's where i would i, I think i'll always have a place with naughty but nice dogs that's absolutely always, no i love know. that i love that and i think i agree i think that um where we start sometimes we always want to take care of that area yeah. because that's where we've grown from yeah and i think there's just so many i mean you know it came up in the pro dog trainer days um that there's probably a little bit of naughty but nice in all dogs right so i think loving that about them and learning to help them through it and and turn them into to strengths you know i think that's that's there's a huge love there really for and, that. and yeah and i think you'll keep growing that here i yeah. think i can't see you yeah. wouldn't so if someone was sat on the fence about being a pro dog trainer yep. or even leaping into the training academy library of games netflix of dog training what would you say to them what's the worst that could happen <laughs> you know i mean i didn't know whether i was going to be able to leave the raft i didn't know if they'd let me leave i didn't know if i was going to get this job if you take me on with such you know a uh, limited amount of experience um i didn't know if i could move down here from scotland i didn't know if my wife would be okay with it um so there were a lot of ifs and buts but then if i flipped that on the head it would be but what if i do get the job you know what if what if i just get down here and, and move down here and you know what if it does work out and what an amazing life it could be so I think just find those steps toward that and and go for it you know I mean life's too short right just go for what you love um, and what can possibly go wrong you just learn from it and move on it's all you know, experience, right? It's I absolutely, mean, it's all learning. My, right? my dad, I always say this. He he says, um, when it's really good, Lauren, enjoy it. It's yeah. really good. It's temporary. Yeah. And when it's really bad, Lauren, 
ride with it, mm-hmm. enjoy it. Like it, it will like just go through it, mm-hmm. and it is temporary. Yeah. So actually, all of these things are temporary. They are not permanent. Absolutely. And so actually, um, like you said, enjoying each day. So whether someone sat on the fence to jump into training academy, mm-hmm. give it a go. Yeah. See what it's like. At the end for of the sure. day, you can cancel. You can cancel. Right? Yeah. Just go for it. I think um, you'll enjoy it. I promise you'll enjoy it. A pro dog trainer. <laughs> if someone fancies having a go at it, you know what? Have a look at it. You're yeah. going to learn. And if someone fancies a holiday or a, mm-hmm. a training journey uh, down to Devon Dogs, whether they come from abroad, uh, anywhere in the world, yep. and they want to train our dogs, or whether they are coming with their dog in the UK, what would you say to them? You will absolutely have a blast um, and you will learn so much. I think you'll just love it. So come along. Come along. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Now, thank you, Sam. That's been amazing. A little insight just thank into you. quite how your life can change in a very short period of time. Very, very short period of time. Uh, that was this episode of the Sex in the Squirrel podcast. Remember, everybody, we want you to stay sexy. Hey, before you go, have you taken part in the worldwide Sexier Than a Squirrel Challenge? It's a 25-day online video program, huge energy, amazing community, and over 6,000 people are already taking part. The only question is, you know where you are today, where do you want to be 25 days from now? Head to absolutedogs.me forward slash sexy. 